So this is just going to be a video where we practice some of the math functions. I'm also going to introduce um, an import statement. So an import statement is something we use to import a file known as a module and this uh, module may contain or usually does contain several classes uh, and functions. If you don't know what classes are that's fine but you should know what functions are by now. Anyway all I need to do is write import the word import and then the module that I want to import. So I want to import the module maths because it has mathematics functions. Now I actually only know really one thing from maths and that's the square root. Um, not because I don't know how to use any maths functions in Python, just because I don't know how to use the math module. I'm actually really more using NumPy and data frames. But anyway, that's irrelevant. So one of the examples that we can use is square root. And this will get the square root of a number. So let's say the number is 16. This should give us the square root, which should be 4. And let's say we want the square root of, I don't know, 4. That should also give us 2. Math.sqrt1 should give us 1, but I'm curious to see what it will give us. Yeah, it did give us 1. So yeah, there are many different maths functions in this module here. And a module, as I said, is essentially just a file uh, containing just a bunch of different functions classes whatever just just it, it contains things that can help you do a specific thing depending on what the modules trying to do so you might get a module that helps you to make uh, graphic interfaces i.e this is a graphic interface you might get a module that helps you uh, make websites or whatever there are modules for different purposes and we import them using the keyword import and then the module I'll get more into modules at a later point. Anyways, I can't really expand on the math module because, as I say, I don't really use it. Um, but if you want to learn about it, I'm sure you can look for information on Google about the math module in Python. It comes standard with uh, Python, so you don't have to download this module. So don't worry about anything. That's just that. That's just a side uh, a side note there. What I'd like to do is kind of practice using some of our uh, mathematics knowledge that we gained from the last video. So I'll make a few variables. I make A, I make B, I make C, I make D, and I make E, and I make F. Okay, we've got plenty of variables to play with. Uh, that equals 22. Yep. Next one can be 9.1. Uh, next one will give it a minus value. Should I do an integer? I'll, I'll just do an integer. We'll do minus 12. We'll put D as minus 0 0.5. You know, do another couple of minus values there. Uh, 102.3 and 99. I'm not entirely sure why that's okay. Yep, it just resolved itself there. We'll just run that, make sure it's all legitimate code. No errors, we're all good. We're all good there. So I'm going to try and do some simple mathematics. And I want to get 20, I want to find out what 22 times 9.1 is, plus minus 12, okay? So, print A times, oops, wrong, A times B plus C. What does that come out as? Does that come out the way I want it? Um, I'd say it probably does. So, let's say this time I actually want 22 times minus 3.1. Okay, so here, here are two calculations. What I'll actually do, in fact, is I'll do both the print statements so you can see the difference. And you can print them out yourselves and see uh, how how... The number printed out by the statement is different depending on how I use the brackets. So this produces, what was it, 188.2 should be printed. I'm not sure why there's an error there. I don't think there actually is an error. No, there isn't. It's just 
auto reporting so there we go and this will print differently and that's because this is now a which is 22 times minus 3.1 um i mean this doesn't actually look correct really hmm wonder why that is wonder why that is let's just check that shall we 9.1 minus 12 is equal to that 2.9 times 22 oh no it is it's correct it's it's correct i was getting that backwards there i was uh taking away the 9.1 from the 12 thinking that it would be something point one rather than something point nine but that makes sense so this is right so we can put that minus sixty three point eight zero should be printed out and that's because of where the parentheses are see that now let's print out c by oops D now we'll do D by C by E by F. Yeah. Wow, that's a very big number there. Now we'll print out mm. E divided by B times by mm, times by A, shall we say? Times by A minus B. Okay, and this, depending on how I want to do this, should change. So at the moment it's 238. Let's assume that we divide this by this now. Instead, do that, and now it's a totally different number. So you see how these, how these uh, parentheses in different places, completely change what number gets printed out. Yeah, that's because of where the parentheses are. That's because it's printing out a different uh, calculation. Instead of printing out e divided by b, then that number times by a. Then minus b, it's it's now printing. It would now print out e divided by b times a minus b, if you see what I'm saying. So we'll put the number here 283.21. Uh, I'm just actually going to copy and paste that. It may not come out as this, but it'll come out probably roughly about. Should be printed. Should be printed. And then the other version is printed differently you see here how i've got space here in python if you've got space in front of your thing without an if statement it usually won't print so if i tried to print this whole thing with the space oh it did it did allow me that indent why did it allow that indent it shouldn't have fine whatever i'll just i'll leave that as it is mystery indent allowance there so this should be printed. And if you mess around with, you know, some of these variables, try and change uh, where the brackets are, whatever, where the parentheses are, make a few of your own sums, you should be able to kind of figure out how the machine is calculating these uh, mathematical equations, how the, how it's interpreting them and how it will spit them out. Okay, now let's remember a few of these functions, shall we? So we've got exponent, which was, for example, a to the power of 2, so a times itself, which should be... I'm not sure what's 22 times 22, 480 or something, something like that. Yeah, 484, pretty close. So that's 484, which is 22 or 22 to the power of 2. 
Okay, we'll do it again just to show a to the power of 3. I'm not sure what that's going to be equal to, but yeah, makes sense. 10,648 or 22 to the power of 3. So that's the exponential, just messing around there with the exponential. And we'll do the remainder. So we'll say print f remainder a. So 99 divided by 22 should be 80. It should be 11, I think, the remainder. And there we go. So remainder of 11. Remainder of 11 when 99 is divided by 22. Hence, return value is 11. So when you come back to this, you know why it's given out the output that it has. Okay, we can try uh, a couple more remainder values once again. We'll try remainder of 9. 9 divided by 5, that should give us a remainder of 4. Okay. This isn't to give people a basic math class, by the way. This is really just to demonstrate these functions. And really, you should be typing along with this, uh, more so that you can get an understanding of how it works, and so, so you can feel it work, so it's like you've constructed it. And play around a little with uh, you know different numbers, um, different e equations, whatever you want to do. We'll demonstrate the max again. So we'll get the max of um, f and a, and that should be f, which is 99. Yep. We'll print the minimum of e and C, and it definitely should be C there at minus 12. And we'll get the absolute values of C, A, B, S, C, and we'll print the absolute value also of B. So the absolute value of C should be 12. And the absolute value of B is the same as the value of B, 9.1. So, yeah, there's some of the functions we, uh, we've we gone over already in the math, the prior maths video. But, yeah, as I say, you know, try and practice. Make a few of your own variables, maybe, you know, and just, just add them up, divide them. Uh, to just try and see how the machine will interpret them. And as I say, play around with some of these functions if you can. And it should improve your understanding of the way that Python handles mathematics and just also of coding and typing into uh, Python.